Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Tuesday, December the 13th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these daily market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters, I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. We've got some more uh, consumer price indexes from across the pond in Germany. We got the final CPI month over month came in line with expectations at 0.1%. And the uh, Italian industrial production came in at unchanged, was expected to climb by 0.3%. A um, little bit of a wet blanket there, but the CPI in Great Britain came in at 1.2%, showing a little bit of inflation there on consumer side uh, by 0.1%. Uh, we also got Great Britain's PPI producer price index inputs came in at a, a big pullback at negative 1.1%, was expected to be a negative 0.4%. And then we also got Great Britain's core CPI uh, came in at 1.4%, slightly higher than the expected 1.3%. Then we also got, um, here in the United States, the NFIB, which is the Natural, National Federation of Independent Businesses. It's the small business index in, uh, for how confident the small businesses are feeling in this environment. And it came in at 94.4, was expected to be a 96.7. Uh, we also got import prices came in line with expectations at negative 0.3%. Later on today, we have a bond auction, and today is the first day of the two-day meeting on the Fed, FOMC. Uh, feds have met and would come out with their rate decision tomorrow after all of the different sectors are heard. Anyway, on to the overall markets. We've got crude oil futures uh, just slightly in negative territory after yesterday's big push to the upside. I talked about that um, yesterday. Uh, then the market basically from the overnight session all the way through to the day session just consistently just slowly sold off. Today we're seeing a little bit of a push to the upside uh, and, but just slightly in negative territory as we speak. Um, right there at $52.77 a barrel. On to crude oil futures, <clears throat> or sorry, on to uh, gold futures. Gold futures continue to move in just a lockstep steady downward. Uh, it's not really a downward spiral really, but almost a stair step to the downside, down another $4 on the day. Uh, stay tuned on Instagram, we're gonna be talking about what my uh, forward guidance is looking like for all of these markets. Um, through pro trader strategy. So keep your eyes out for that. On to the bonds. Bonds pushing a little bit higher today as the markets in the equities are kind of mixed, despite the fact that we've seen a lot of push to the upside and new historical highs. Uh, we've got bonds uh, taking back a little bit of the losses that we've seen in the past few days, up almost a half of a, a percent, uh, up 12 ticks. I talked about this, I think it's going to kind of go up there and push into a right around in this range, right into the 150s, heading into tomorrow's meeting. I think we'll see a little bit of a, a short covering rally, if you will, as people close out their books, getting ready for that. Into the Dow, Dow, another new historical high. It really wants to test that uh, uh, two. Uh, 20,000 people are already starting to bust out their 20,000 hats. We came about 85 points away from that. I think it just almost has to happen just because uh, <laughs> that is a magnet at this point. The market really wants that to happen. Really going to be determined on what the Fed does tomorrow. If they raise by 25 basis points, uh, we might still see that happen. If they raise by 50, I think you're going to see a tantrum happen. If they don't do anything at all, I think it is guaranteed to happen. On to the NASDAQ. Finally, the NASDAQ has broken up 
to the upside and is actually the one outpacing the broader market as uh, the tech sector is starting to see some investors come in and take advantage of some of these beaten up stocks in this sector. Uh, but the NASDAQ up 75, 76 points right now, up over a percent and a half on the day and making a new historical high. Again, same scenario, uh, 25 basis point hike, the 50,000 is probably going to happen. They don't do anything at all. It is sure to happen. And on the E-mini S&Ps up 11 points on the day, but as you can see, it's only up a half a percent. So the NASDAQ clearly leading the way to the upside right now. But again, the E-mini S&Ps new historical highs. This is the daily chart of the E-mini S&Ps and uh, the high was printed in the day session. So that uh, validates a lot of things. You know, we saw this happen overnight. That was a historical high overnight. The market always wants to print uh, these major milestones within the day session of the trading. And that finally happened with today. We got that intraday historical high. It's been happening overnight and that really um, doesn't hold as much weight as when it happens during the day session. But E-mini S&P is up over 11 points right now. On to a few things that I've done with IWM, the Russell. You guys know that I've had on this trade for quite a while now, and it has not worked out. I originally started out with the Dece 124-109 strangle. And what happened was as soon as I got tested on my uh, upper band on those 124 calls that I was short, I needed to start getting mechanical and looking to defend that. So I then rolled my 109 puts up to the 120, or sorry, 124 puts. So that created the Dece 124 straddle. And uh, when I did that roll, I collected another dollar 25 for it. And then yesterday, uh, late in the afternoon, I decided it was time to roll those out. I only had about four days to go. Uh, I'd basically taken all of the extrinsic value that I could out of that and rolled those Dece 124 four straddles up to the or up and or actually out just out to the January 124 straddle collected another 61 cents for that so all in all I collected about three dollars and let's call it 30 cents for um, you know just a ballpark there and so that puts my break even at 127 let's say so still deep uh, in um, it's still a, a pretty big loser right now, but I'm looking for a bit of a pullback here. Uh, I think that the market, once we start seeing these milestones created with the Dow 20,000, uh, the NASDAQ, um, I think we're going to see a bit of a pullback. And I'm going to talk about that also in that uh, Instagram video, but I think that we're going to see these historical highs made and then see a bit of a pullback as there's some profit taking. That's what I'm looking for early on in the year. And then um, I'll talk about what my milestones are going for 2017. Then uh, keeping with that mantra of rolling out stay mechanical, same thing with the SPY. Uh, if you guys remember with the SPOOs I had on the December uh, 217, 205 strangle and I originally collected four dollars and 29 cents for that that's when we had really high uh, implied volatility so I was able to get a big huge uh, premium for that then it wasn't working out as soon as I got tested on my 217 calls I rolled my 205 puts up to the 217 puts and created another strangle so I had on the Dece 217 strangle and I collected another dollar twenty-nine for that roll earlier on, and then yesterday I rolled those Dece two seventeen straddles out to the uh, January two seventeen straddle. Collected another dollar thirty-five. So all of those premiums collected together, I've collected around seven dollars for that. As you can figure, uh, that puts my break even at now two twenty-four right around there um, and if I can get a bit of a pullback here then uh, we'll look to cover those as well. 
So that's about all I've done, just staying mechanical, staying the course, uh, collecting more premium for some of these ones that are not working out. But what that does is it allows me to increase my break even and buys me some more time to be right. So I talked about that in these webinars and how to stay mechanical with those. Friday's webinar is going to be on the uh, call calendar and I'm, it's really staying in that theme of getting ready for earnings season. This is another great strategy to use when we have this really low implied volatility, which we're seeing across the board. A lot of times we get that big, huge dive in volatility right after earnings season. So we're going to be trying to take advantage of some of that. I'm going to show you all the rules around how to set up a call calendar to increase your probabilities of profit and how to stay mechanical with that if it's not working out. All right. So Go to ProTraderStrategies.com, sign up for that. It's going to be a really good one. And if you can't take that, take it easy.